it's Wacky Anime What If here, and I'm here to present you with What If Aizen was a heroic spirit and summoned by Ren. So this is how it's gonna happen. Aizen has just been slain. Aizen was slain by, well, let's just say a particular soul reaper known as Ichigo Kurosaki. You see, in this actual universe, this is a separate universe from the original Bleach canon. Aizen has just merged with the Ogyoku, not completely. Thus, when Ichigo was fighting him in Donkai State, and he used his, he decided instead of messing around, just went ahead and used his final Getsuga Tensho, just to finish off Aizen. And, at this point, Aizen didn't have any means to fight back against something like that. So, Aizen was immediately decimated by him, by Ichigo. Hokyoku and all, everything was disintegrated. Or so they thought. But Aizen was actually summoned by the Holy Grail before his death. Which he's still alive, surprisingly. Because... Ren, at the same moment, was summoning a heroic spirit. And the Grail was trying to decide on who really to pick for everyone. And it was too busy picking actual candidates that it accidentally mispicked someone. It should have went for Shiro Emiya, you know, well, or what you guys know as Archer. should have went for Archer, but uh, it didn't. It accidentally picked Sosuke Aizen by mistake and it took him and it basically made him be the one that was summoned so Ren is currently you know summoning with in front of her circle trying to summon a saber class and all of a sudden all the way above in her house the top floor of her house she hears a loud crash going going in and she runs all the way up the stairs and she opens the door, and she sees this very attractive man sitting down on a couch. And she's looking at him, trying to find out what class he is. And Aizen has already been notified about everything from, you know, the Holy Grail. Telling him about this whole Holy Grail war and all that. And he can get a wish if he beats it. That's all Aizen really cares about. So Aizen, when he sees Ren, and Ren asks what class he is, because she already assumes that he's the summon, and she has the marks on her hands, the actual, you know, command seals, and, well, Aizen says... Hmm, if you're trying to say what class I am, uh, let's just say I'm sort of a unknown entity. Or, you know, unparalleled. I don't have a class, that's the thing. They didn't really classify me. And she doesn't believe him, so she gets out the scroll that can actually tell what the heroic spirit that they summoned their status and everything. When she looks at Aizen's status, she literally, her eyeballs look like they're about to pop out of her skull. Because it literally says, all the stats are immeasurable. Well, not immeasurable, but they're just way too fucking high. And he has so many skills that it's just, he's, she's curious about who this man is. Because she's never heard of a heroic spirit that had this many skills. He has something called Bakudo, and a lot of actual Bakudo, what spells she is thinking. So she's thinking that he's maybe a caster, most likely. And she does see the sword, but she thinks maybe he's like a, a, a actual caster and a assassin, maybe? Because some assassins have an actual katana. And she's literally thinking of this, and Sosuke is just trying to think of a plan. 
Because he's thinking, what happens if she asks me about where I'm from and what legend I'm, I am? Because Sosuke has an infinite reputation in his world. Which is parallel to Fate, to Fate series. Parallel to their world. And he has an infamous legend there, apparently. The Holy Grail says he was supposed to have died. But they got him a few seconds before he died. So most of the rules of, you know, command spells, tossed out the window by Aizen. If Ren even uses a command spell, it wouldn't work on Aizen. But she does not know this. So, Aizen's currently thinking about what happens if she tries to ask him about exactly what nature he is, what he did to be remembered, and have so much power. So he's thinking of a fib to sell her, and she's like, you know, still like examining all the skills he has, and she notices that it says he's incomplete. It says incomplete version. And she's thinking, wait, so this isn't even all of his power. And she's smirking to herself, thinking, I summoned something way better than the saber. <laughs> and she's looking at Aizen, and she just asks, what legend are you? And Aizen just says, I don't know. I was summoned here, and I didn't have any memories, really. Or too many memories. Only certain ones. Most of my head, most of it's really fuzzy. And Aizen thought about this for a while. Because she noticed that the mage is shocked to have summoned someone who didn't seem like a saber class, as she thought she was going to get. And he thought, uh, she might have thought that she missed summoned or something. So, if it's an incorrect summon, he could just say that because of her incorrect summoning method, or her incompetence that he does not have any of his memories, thus he doesn't know what his legend is, or of what nature. So he basically just says this to Ren, and Ren is just pretty down and pretty pissed at him because, well, she he just said that she was incompetent. And Aizen just says, I'm gonna go ahead and go get some information. And Ren just Literally is not going up for that. Just tells Aizen to stay in the house. And Aizen just says, I won't because while I stay in this house, couldn't your enemies be planning or already summon their actual, you know, heroic spirits? Do you even know if they've already summoned their heroic spirits? There could be someone who has not already. And we could catch them off guard. Or actually kill them before they actually become a threat. And once Ren hears this, she starts thinking that this man's very twisted, not very her heroic like. And Aizen notices this in Ren and just says, My dear Ren, and puts, puts his hands on her cheek and push, look, makes her look at him right into his eyes. And she's being captivated, captivated by his beauty. And he just says, my dear Ren, I'm just trying to look out for the best of, for both of us. Because I have a wish that I want, and you have something to prove, I'm guessing, from how you hold yourself, my beautiful Ren. You have the most beautiful blue eyes. I feel like I get lost in them. And Ren starts blushing, and Aizen just starts sweet-talking Ren. And she just lets him go. Because she can't really say anything, because he had sound logic. Kind of cruel, but if it's for the best of for both of them, and he's thinking like that, then maybe he might have been, you know, a good guy, I guess. Doesn't really seem too manipulative. And doesn't seem like a bad guy from just the glance of it. And Aizen just says, hmm, why thank you. I'll be going now. I'll go get some information. And he flash steps. He immediately starts flash stepping out of the Ren mansion because she has a mansion. 
Flash steps out of it. And she, he's going through the actual city, getting some bits of information, while Ren's trying to f decipher exactly what legend he's from. So she goes to the library in her actual mansion. And she's reading on multiple different legends, but can't seem to trace him. She's been reading for about hours and hours. And Sosuke's been out just investigating, trying to listen in everywhere he can to find if there's any servants or masters around that he can eliminate before they become a bigger threat later on. And he finds out that, well, he since he's alive, if he asks the Holy Grail something which he can communicate with the Holy Grail directly since he's alive, and the Hogyoku that's inside of him still, because it was erased with him, well, not erased, but took him with him, it grants him permission to do this. Which, when Aizen talks and just was wondering, I wonder what all the other servants are, and yeah, the actual gr Grail tells him all about the servants, which Aizen was not expecting this, but he smirks about all the servants that were already summoned. They were already all summoned, which he was pissed about, because he couldn't get rid of some of them before they were. But, he found out all of them, what all of them were, and their legends, and their abilities. And, he also finds out who was supposed to replace him. A person known as Shiro Emiya, who was Archer, if you didn't know. And, yeah, he finds out that there's a Shiro Emiya in this timeline. He immediately finds this out. Because it says he originates from this timeline. So, Aizen immediately flash steps to Shiro's house. And he's thinking, I gotta get him out of the equation. Because... Well, the Holy Grail told him this, but it's an unknown variable. And when Aizen literally didn't pay attention to Ichigo as often, or didn't eliminate him immediately, he became an immediate threat. And Aizen did not want this to repeat, history to repeat. So he just flash-stepped towards Emiya, who is currently at school. Emiya is currently at school, he's just, you know clean the whole entire school by himself, the kendo club by himself, and he's about to head home. And he sees uh, this one man, and this one man just is about, to, and it's Aizen. He sees Aizen, and he's just asking him, what are you wearing exactly? Are you a cosplay? And before he could even say anything, Aizen, instead of killing Shiro, Decides to do something else. He lifts out his sword and he says, Look at this blade, isn't it beautiful? And, well, you know, Shiro looks into the blade and Aizen basically blocks his senses and he starts messing with them because his Shikai, he never really explored too much of it until it was merged with him. And in his final moments, he was kind of thinking, What could he have done to avoid this? before he was inevitably killed, but he wasn't. He was dragged into the Fate world, alive, which breaks all the rules. And, well, Aizen figured he could mess around with his Zanpakuto and explore a little bit more, because he can. He realized he can merge his actual Zanpakuto out of him and summon the actual blade. Which he does, it's an empty blade though, doesn't actually have the ability, he himself does. And well, while, you know, Shiro looks into the blade, he gets hypnotized. And Aizen starting to mess with his senses. And completely rearranges his memories. And makes it to where he is loyal to Aizen. And Aizen thinks this might be useful later on, he doesn't know how, but if he thinks what's going to happen is going to happen, then it's going to be very, very useful. And he flash steps away from the school. And once he's away, Shiro just snaps out of his trance, and he just starts to go home. 
and just was wondering what that was. He forgot all about his encounter with Aizen. And, yeah, he just leaves, goes home, regular stuff happens with him, and Aizen's just continuing to flash stuff around the whole, whole city. And, right when he's flash stepping, he runs into one golden-haired boy with red eyes, this golden-haired teen, and Aizen already knows who it is. He sees that it's Gilgamesh. And Aizen's thinking, should I wipe him out now, or should I wipe him out later? Aizen's currently thinking, if I wipe him out now, though, then, hmm, I don't really get to see anything interesting. And he could wipe out a lot of my competition for me. And I could wipe him out later, maybe. He's contemplating, Gilgamesh finally notices him. Because, uh, Aizen's literally been, like, floating the air above Gilgamesh the entire time. He looks upwards, and he sees Aizen, and Aizen just, you know, notices that Gilgamesh saw him, and he's just like, hmm, I think I would have a plan. He flash steps behind Gilgamesh, and is about to swing towards him to injure Gilgamesh, and Gilgamesh just immediately opens his gates of battle on and starts firing his weapons at rapid speed, catching you Aizen off guard because he didn't think it would fire this quickly or it could activate that quickly. So he flash steps away and he's flash stepped about two meters back because they're both on the streets. On a street. And they're near a tunnel currently. And Aizen, he just, you know, unsheaths his blade, which he has mainly for decoration to be honest. And well, Gilgamesh sees this, and he's thinking, hmm, I don't know who this servant is exactly. I don't know who he is, what heroic spirit, or what type he is, or his ability. Maybe I should fall back, or I could just use his own weapon against him. And Gilgamesh has evolved over the years in this timeline. Gilgamesh can now use the actual noble phantasms of, well, his opponents, if it involves their weapon, which Aizen's used to involve his weapons. weapon. So he just pulls out the exact same weapon, and Aizen is shocked because he just pulled out a Shinigami's weapon. He just pulled out a Soul Reaper's weapon, and he's not a Soul Reaper, but he still somehow managed to wield it. And Aizen just knows not to stare into the blade. So he closes his eyes and just rushes towards Gilgamesh. And Gilgamesh thinks that he has a death wish because he doesn't know what Aizen's actual weapon does. So he runs up towards Aizen, doesn't really look into the blade, just looks at his opponent. He tends to do that instead in battle. So they clash. Aizen swings to the left and Gilgamesh blocks it. And Aizen just sweep kicks him. And, he, and Gilgamesh is falling, he presses his hand downwards towards the ground, and catches himself, and does a spinning kick onto Aizen. Which Aizen is a little dazed. He didn't think that Gilgamesh was this powerful, that it actually affected him. And then Aizen's just like, I think I should stop playing with the children now. And he just raises his spiritual pressure, causing Gilgamesh to vomit some blood. But Gilgamesh is still standing up and puts on his golden armor. And it just appears around him. And Gilgamesh knows he shouldn't play around with Aizen. And he just pulls out his ultimate weapon, which I forgot the name of the weapon, I'm so sorry. But it's this lance-like sword, and he's about to unleash it onto Aizen. But Aizen is called back by Ren telepathically. And Ren says that she'll use a command steal if he doesn't appear back back at the mansion. So Aizen, as fun as this was for Aizen, Aizen flash stepped away and said, I'll see you next time, King of Heroes. And Gilgamesh is shocked that he was discovered this early. Because Gilgamesh wanted to hide in the shadows and take out some servants. And get the lesser grail. 
but now he is discovered by this new threat that he does not know of. And once Eisenblast steps away, he is kind of wondering, hmm, what should I do? Should I continue to obey Ren just so I can use her for my own ends? And Eisen's thinking about going with this plan because he could immediately defect from her and those actual command seals do nothing to him. But if he wants to win his the in the Holy Grail War, he has to, well, have an ally or someone that can feed information to him about his opponents. Because all he can really know about are the informations about the servants. He wants to know about the masters. So that's where Ren comes in. So he flash steps back to the mansion, and he uh, looks at Ren at the front of the mansion, who's very mad, and he flash steps in front of her, and puts his hand right beside her, and grabs her hair, and just puts his fingers slowly down her hair, and whispers in her ear, and says, So, are we going to go inside and talk about plans, or are we going to stay out here in the cold? Or maybe I could just warm you up. And this made Rin blush madly. And she is just dumbfounded and very sh in shock right now. Because she was about to ask Aizen about like who he was exactly, like what heroic spirit, because she couldn't find anything about him. And she's thinking that he has memories. And... Yeah, right now she's completely out of out of her mind, just completely just just forgot about it to ask. And they walk inside, and Eisen asks about certain magic mage families, and well, Ren divulges, and Eisen says, "I think you should probably go to sleep, my dear. I wouldn't want you to be too exhausted in the Holy Grail War, now would I?" And Ren is just saying that she doesn't really need any sleep, she needs to get more information, get stronger, and find out more about her opponents, and Aizen just lifts her up off her feet, bridal style, walks towards her bedroom, and Ren is blushing, and he just puts her straight into the bed, and puts the covers over her, and gives her a good night kiss on the, on the actual cheek. And this causes Ren to blush, but smile on the inside, and she doesn't know why. And Aizen's just walking out of the room, opens the door, closes it, and puts off his fake smile that he was having on in front of Ren, and has his cold stare, and his very cold smile, calculative smile, if I would say. And he's currently thinking about how he can use this woman known as Ren to his advantage. And in many different ways, he can manipulate her feelings, make her have feelings for him, and then use use her just like that. Because, well, Shiro, his act, the reason why his ability works on Shiro, which he tried to use it on Ren, but it didn't work. Because on Shiro, he's not an official candidate in the great war, and the, you know, grail war. He's not an official candidate yet, so it worked on him, but it doesn't work on other candidates. He can't manipul manipulate their memories, only on people that are, well, not in the game, or not a mage yet. So, Aizen's just wondering about this, and yeah, that's where I'm going to leave off the episode. I hope you guys enjoy this, and I hope you guys after part two. Also, just to tell you, certain series will be discontinued if they don't get up to 20 likes. They have to get to 20 likes, and I'll continue their series, the series. It's just to show that people are interested in the actual series. Alright, so see you.